Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are on episode seven of The Locker Room. I'm joined by Zach, yeah. Austin Slasher, and Eric Snoopy in what's going to be a bit of a, a beta discussion on this episode. Uh, obviously, the, the last two weeks has been all beta and the guys have been grinding, so we want to get their first thoughts and opinions of the game. But before we get there, how's, uh, how's everyone doing? We'll start with you, Zach. Good man, you know, just grinded the barrier a little bit. Not as much as most people have been playing Tarkov, really, but... Um, no, yeah, but it was fun. Can't wait to talk about it. There's a, a few OP things, but I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll tweak by the time we get to the, the real game, so... Yeah, not bad. And Austin and Eric, what's uh, what, what are the first three words to describe your first experience of uh, the beta? First three words? <laughs> um... Fun. Fun? <laughs> fun. Um, I'm really happy. You're on the <laughs> it was fun. Um, uh, what That's it. This is just fun. Yeah, yeah, it, was fun. it was fun. <laughs> Lost fun, fun, and fun, fun, grind, and hope. 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 Ooh. Hope. Caught his back. Caught his back, huh? <laughs> is that what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, I really like playing, uh, playing the beta. Even though it was only like five maps, five maps, I think. Uh, it was, it was still fun. <clears throat> and Austin, you've played obviously MW two before. I'm not sure if Eric has actually played the original <laughs> MW two. So it was five thought... when that came out, so barely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've played it. I've played it. Oh yeah. On my, yeah. On my brother's PS three. <clears throat> so <laughs> how, how, how do you feel about Austin? Uh, do you want my three words or just like... Just initial thoughts. Just initial hit, thoughts. Hit us. Um, honestly, I was having a pretty good time. Uh, I've, I've been taking a lot of time off of COD. I think this off season was so long. So I'm just like excited to get back into it. I was telling you guys earlier, that's the first beta I hit the max level in. in probably four or five years. So that's a good sign. Uh, I even played a beta tournament. Or a couple of them. I won one, so that oh, was dial. an interesting oh, little yes, session yes. there. Yeah, um, I was having fun with it. Uh, obviously, there there's got to be some things that need to be tweaked on the competitive side. I think from the casual side of things, I think people are gonna really enjoy this, like Warzone and pubs and stuff like that. I think we're gonna have a good time. Um, and then when it comes to the competitive side of things, I think we're we're gonna need some maps because I know the MW2 maps. I don't know how Hardpoint's gonna play on those. So I'm a little interested. And we're gonna need some spawn because uh, right now you're spawning underground on high rise 24 <laughs> 7. I don't know how that's gonna work out too well. Yeah, no, it was definitely a, a, a little different. I know, at least from previous COD, uh, red dots were, were back, so that was always, yeah, that, that was always helpful. The movement felt very clean. Um, but I want to just dive straight into it. What was your favorite gun and why? I know there was like the MCW, which is like the ACR, then the striker yeah. was like the UMP. Um, hit, hit, hit us with your favorite guns. I like the MCW a lot. Um, I feel like it felt really fun to use. Uh, it was nice to being able to use like a red dot again on your AR because it didn't like penalize you like in the past few years where we had to run our iron sight. Um, so that felt good. Yeah, I think that was definitely the most. I used like a lot of the guns, but that's definitely the one that I had the most fun with. Um, I think the best gun probably was the striker or the MCW, but uh, I really liked using the rivals, like the sub. I had more fun playing with the uh, rivals than the striker, even though I feel like the striker is a better gun. But uh, striker was definitely the best gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, uh, it, it could like map people across the map and stuff, even though it's a sub. But um. I don't know. I just like having fun with the rivals, you know? Close range. I feel like close range, uh, it could be better than the striker. But uh, I just had more fun using it. <clears throat> I feel like the sniping, too, is pretty crazy. Oh, I've yeah. seen a ton of clips of, like, trick shotting. Oh, yeah. Where the snipers had, like, 30 bullets in the clip. And they were semi out oh, So you can literally yeah, run around, like, hip firing with the laser on and stuff. There's some nuts stuff going on with the snipers. If you guys remember the Dragonov? I feel like every sniper pretty much is yes. the Dragonov with the one shots. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. The Dragonov used to, if you got hit in the head by the Dragonov, I'm pretty sure it was a one bullet, but if you got hit in the body, it's always two bullet. But every sniper is just one shot into the chest with yes. these laser sights where they just, they can hit fire across the map. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I use the MCW. Yeah, it's it's busted. MCW though, with the mosquito drone that you throw in the. the <laughs> <cool street. laughs> I was sitting on, I was sitting on every head glitch, just throwing these little drones in the sky. It was great. I was having a whirl of time. <laughs> what was the? I swear there was like a tactical you could use. Oh, the breacher drone. Yeah, it's like a, it's it's like a, it's like a little drone that has a bomb on it. People, I was going to the top of Rust, and people were sending it up to kill me. Yeah. Um, it just goes in a straight line and blows up the first thing it hits. So that's actually like a lethal. It's not like a or like a tactical. It's not a, a it's, it's a it's a yeah, it's a lethal. Yeah, yeah. that looks because you can't that control it. You just you just look and you throw. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw Preston. He was abusing everything. Uh, there's a couple of clips of him like throwing that drone. Then he's like got the sniper out, like sitting in the spawn, like one v four and people. Oh yes, yeah, so. <laughs> he was he was having a grand time. Um, but one of the guns you didn't mention um, that he actually liked was the MTZ. Now mm. I don't know how viable it's gonna be, but it kind of you know with MCW the MTZ and the Striker. Um, do you guys feel there will be like a true flex role in this upcoming game just based on the beta or is it too early to tell? Because um, I feel like the MCW was a little too slow for flexes, but like, I guess it depends on the maps, but still like... Uh, I think yeah. with the the current uh, build that they have, if they don't tweak any of the weapons, knowing the maps really well too, like you got to think about like invasion and stuff like that. Like it would probably be three strikers. And maybe yeah. like one AR. Mm -hmm. And then like high rise, you'll probably have two ARs, maybe even three sometimes. So me thinking about it, oh. like I feel like there might be a true flex role. I hope there's an actual flex role in the game where it's not like they're just using a flex gun. Like I want the flex player to have to be able to use the sub and use the AR. Like that's yeah. a flex to me, the true flex. Like back in the day, you had to be able to run like in BO3, the MA and the BMP. And that was what made you a flex player. I don't like the like Maddox type guns where you just run that because then you're not. That's not much of a flex player to me. You just run one gun. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So no, that makes hoping, sense. But we'll see. I guess one of the things that I had a question for, like, kind of, what are the advantages of Boss and Breach having someone that's notoriously like I think Preston's played every single role from main AR, yeah, yeah. flex, SMG. Like, what are the advantages that we have coming in the season, knowing that? that very well could be a possibility. He could be running a strike and invasion. And then uh, if, if high rise comes to where he's running, you know, the second AR, um, because a lot of it, of the team composition, like that does come down to it. Like I know Seattle's probably got like a three AR-esque team and they may struggle when the three striker comes out. That helps Zach in the map videos. That helps the team overall because we can adapt, we can flex. Um, yeah, what, what advantages is that for us? I think that's huge. I mean, I think a lot of the teams nowadays have two main AR players, kind of. Like, they might have a AR player who plays a little quicker, but there's some flexes who I know for a fact would not be as good with a sub. Like, back in the day, you could easily, like, manipulate the veto process and be like, okay, there's these AR maps, these, these sub maps. Let's put this flex on a sub and make him play well. Like, people used to try to do that to, like, when I played with, like, Gunless in World War II. They would try to put him on a sub map, but he was really good with both. He was probably a little bit better with an AR, a little bit more like scary to play against, but he was good with a sub. So they would try to force him on a sub and make him make us beat him that way. And I think that's an aspect in Call of Duty we've been missing for a while now. I feel like there's just been too many ARs and too many subs, which is kind of I don't I don't like that. I feel like having someone like Preston who's very proficient with like both weapons gives us an advantage if they do decide to go the route where you know, there's a true flex player. How about you, Zach? It's Have funny. You got, it's like, funny. Any thoughts around in that? Yeah, I mean, I always, you know me, I always like the flex. Um, I know you mentioned the Maddox, Austin, but I remember me on Black Ops 4, like I'd always switch between the Maddox and the and the Sorg, depending on the map. Yeah. Um, didn't just use one gun. Like I was like in, in that third player, like in between. Um, and funny, funny enough with the Maddox again, like I made an MCW build. I think Ronan gave it to me. And he made the the MCW literally exactly like a Maddox, like the crack aiming, like how fast it aims in. Yeah. So like, I'll be interested to see people experiment with like different attachments and see what they can come up with because it's just there's so much you can do. And people, I mean, it, 
I don't like it personally, where you, you know you have to use a shotgun to level twelve to get a grip for the AR. Um, <laughs> yeah. But once people start realizing what is actually good, um, I think it's gonna, you know, we won't know until private matches and stuff. But you know, I think there's gonna be some some cool combinations and fast MCWs, and you know, maybe people can make the the striker better, and um, you know, it's just it's just gonna be different. Um, and there's just again there's like 40 attachments per gun, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping there is a true flex. I mean, we've built our team pretty well around like any combination of AR subs, so um, kind of benefits us. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of the the 500 different attachments, and I know. I feel like at the start of the game, like everyone plays. Some teams like limit testing a lot and some teams like play more reserved and like catching people that are limit testing. Um, so I feel like always at the start of the game, like ARs are they're notoriously blessed. And then by the time people realize how to actually play the game, they're like, wow, the SMGs are just the way they maneuver around the map, mm -hmm. the way they start pathing. It's like the ARs are just tagging them across the like little hallway alleyway and then uh, the SMGs become overpowered so it would definitely be um interesting to see how it kind of the game develops i think it will take a very similar cycle where everyone's double mcw double striker and get in the feel and then there's going to be a couple of teams that really want to push the boundary and i think those teams that push the boundary early on in the season um although they may like suffer a little bit because they're limit testing and they're taking those risks they end up learning a lot quicker about the risk versus reward and um, around the mid-seasons when they really start to come online. So really interested to see how all that kind of works. With that being said, the time to kill. What are your guys' original thoughts on the time to kill? I know it's a bit of a higher time to kill than last game. Um, and how does that kind of like influence um, you know, the game and kind of the strategy and play style at a professional level? Go with you, Eric, because you're you're, you're yeah. a bit quiet. Yeah, oh. you're, <laughs> I, I know you play Black Ops Four all the time, so yeah, you know <laughs> yeah, I've been playing Vo Four a lot. Uh, honestly, I feel like one fifty is like. I mean, I felt it like pretty good, you know. Uh, sometimes I was like, wait, no way, I didn't kill him there. But um, you know, like most of the time, I feel like it it felt pretty smooth, and <clears throat> I, mean, I was using the striker, so you know that gun was too OP. <laughs> and you know, I just fry them. But uh <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I feel like I feel like I mean that in, like kinda increases the skill gap too. And it's you know, it's pretty I feel like it was pretty pretty good, you know. I like it. Could can you elaborate why does a higher <laughs> time to kill mean a higher skill gap? Can you explain mm. the 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 audience? Because <laughs> like some people are like, eh, like it just means I'm getting bullshit, I'm like pumping like a whole clip that someone are not dying like well, what does it actually mean i mean <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah you know if you like if it's lower you obviously kill them faster you know so like uh um, yeah, so so so, so just, what, what does that mean to me that means that you have like more opportunities you know like to like i don't know how to explain it but uh <laughs> the gunfights are going to be longer there's more yeah, like, there's more time to finesse. There's more time to yeah. people that are good with their movement, like strafing and stuff. They're going to benefit from this because the gunfights again, they're not going to be two second gunfights. Mm. They're going to be four, five second gunfights. So then mm. micro adjustments in you know strafing left to right, that's all going to come into effect. And you know, I I think of it again. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is a very similar type like TTK to like Black Ops Four, but just without stim. Like if you if you think to like an initial gunfight in Black Ops 4, like it's kind of how it was. Like the Sorg, Sorg killed up close towards the end because of hit scan, but like Maddox versus Maddox long range, if you took away Stim, this is kind of similar to like a TTK to this game, um, which I like. I mean, I'm biased. I think Black Ops 4 is the best game we've had in the last few years, but um, yeah, that's... I'll answer Eric's question for him. There you go. <laughs> that was a funny I would right there. Yeah. To piggyback yeah. off that a little bit, uh, I kind of agree with you. I think BO4 is probably the best game we've had in a while. But I will say, I don't want it to get to the extreme of BO4 where SND is just played where, all right, let's just 4 hit A. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then you can yep. just overrun somebody because you have so much health and like yeah. someone can't hold the lane down. Like I want it to be like a good middle ground between last year where, you know, you insta kill people with a headshot and BO4 to where you could just body stack and win. Yeah. But there's like, you know, because if you get to too high of health, it becomes like less strategy and search and more just bum rush this. They can't hold it. Like yeah. unless they force stack it back on us. So I don't like that type of SND personally. And I'm really hoping this get to that. Which didn't seem, I honestly didn't think it seemed as bad as BO4 trying to kill. Um, but I thought respawn in BO4 was the best we definitely had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think yeah, middle, the middle ground would be like perfect. Yeah, SD was kind of cheese. I remember some of our strats on like frequency. Just like, oh, let's go four hit the four left because they, they can't do anything. Yeah, like if one guy's there holding it down, he's not even going to get one. Yeah. Whereas I'm pretty sure like, Pretty sure Dan, you were the guy that would hold ring for us. Or maybe it was, maybe it was uh, Brad. But <laughs> yeah. As, as soon as you see people ring, you just run away. Because like, there's yeah, that's what you... I'm saying though. But like, yeah. that's so corny. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I should be able to hold 100%. down a power spot with a head glitch, and if you don't nade me out and like you just three jump at me, like I at least get one. You know yeah, what I mean? No, and get no. the info. Hundred percent. Yeah. We'll see how it plays. It didn't. See, I honestly felt like it felt good, but I'm playing pubs, so it's, it's really hard to mm -hmm. tell. Usually, usually pubs. Uh, I mean, I haven't played private match in a while, but pubs are always a little smoother than the private match kind Usually. of, yeah, hit, like hit red. So, would be interesting to see that like, once again the kind of the limit tested there because, yeah, I think with a, a higher time to kill, you kind of have more of an opportunity to make the other guy miss through movement. Um, you have a chance to actually shoot back, um, and you can kind of get a little bit of turn ons. So there were some people that were getting turned on last year with the the low TDK. I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> oh, damn. I will say too that uh, I know it's easier for them to balance things when there's a higher time to kill. It's way okay. easier for the balancing process, stuff like that. So that is definitely a plus too. Uh, I know they can like make the guns a little bit closer to each other. And I'm just I'm also hoping that I didn't really notice too much, but it's probably a thing is the headshot multiplier. I really hope that that's not too high. Yeah. Last year it was crazy. You're on a head glitch and you just get instant or hit sometimes. It's like, dude, I should just stand in the open. What did you guys think of, like, I don't know if you got to experience it, but like the bullet drop off, like Eric, you said you used a sub a lot. Like, what did you, what did you think of like the bullet drop? Like, did you think it was like fair, even, overpowered, like not enough? What was, uh, what, was bullet drop? what do you mean by the bullet drop? Just like, if you were, you, you were using, well, the, the, the striker, like, mm, yeah, and the rivals just, too, across the map, if you were to try and shoot, like, let's say a, a main AR, like, let's take it into a competitive environment, like, mm -hmm. you know, there was, there's some subs in, in COD history, in recent history, that you could shoot, you could challenge an AR across the map, and like, oh, yeah, if you hit your shots, they're dead, like, how was that in the beta for you, like, I mean, with the striker, you could do that, like, very often, to be honest, <laughs> like, it was kind of okay, like, that gun was like an AR too, uh, with the right attachments. But uh, with the other one, I didn't feel like I could do that, you know? I just okay. felt like the strikers, the striker was really, I feel like it was OP and you could do that. You know, you could chow an AR and kill him. Okay. Just across the map. It's enough to strike on, is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like that might happen. <laughs> that might happen. I'm not sure. But like, I assume they took a lot of feedback from the beta and they're probably like, holy moly. Like, the funny thing is, is that is the nerfed version of the striker. <laughs> the one I played in the alpha was, uh, yeah, everyone would just use it. <laughs> it was like the uh, COD Ghost Vector. Like, everyone would use that like, gun. It was insane, bro. And this was still really good in the beta, but it was the nerf version. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder if they do a secondary nerf, but... They probably will, but we'll see. It might take them till January, who knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to go off, like, the time to kill, how about... I mean, the movement, like I was looking at some clips from every pro player and the movement feel or look pretty like fluid and fast. Mm -hmm. How does this kind of movement style continue to revolutionize the game and what does this mean like for the competitive landscape? I know back in the day it was very strafe oriented. Uh, there was less movement and now it's like if you're not moving like, like, like you just said, Austin, like you're behind a head glitch. These days if someone comes around the corner, camera is you and headshots show you're dead. How does that kind of play into the, the competitive landscape? And um, I do feel some teams will kind of struggle with the ability to kind of push the boundaries of how quick the game actually feels. Uh, I think anyone, that... Anyone, anyone. <laughs> well, I, I have like two sides to it. I think it's like good in a sense. 
then I also think it's bad too. And what I mean by that is like on the good side of things, it'll be fun to watch. Um, there'll be more highlight reels, uh, things like that. The game will be a little bit more fast paced. But uh, I also think it'll be a negative because um, like, for instance, MW2 maps like Scrapyard, you can't play that map with this movement. There's no shot. You know what I mean? It's going to feel like shipment. Like you're running yeah. around like a small map like that. It's just, just over. And I also think, um, I think some sometimes COD movement is like the flashy plays and stuff like that. Like they do look cool, but I also think the high level, it's in a sense sometimes a bailout for someone with bad positioning. Like I can out position someone, but if they have a slide cancel, they have a chance in my opinion. Whereas if, and COD goes some on the white truck head glitch, like, it don't matter what you do. Like, you know what I mean? You're not killing me. Uh, so, I don't know. There's definitely a skill to it, and, like, people have better movement than others, like, obviously. But I think, I don't it's, it's, like I said, it's just, I'm always in the middle on this one. Like, I don't really care anymore. I used to think it was straight cheese. Now I'm just like, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to see how it plays on some of these MW2 maps. Cause, like I said, they used to play Scrapyard back in the day, and the slide cancel, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I've only played the beta so far, and by all means, I wasn't a competitive player back in Modern Warfare 2 when it was out, but even maps like Favela, like, there's some, like, jump spots, and there's some spots you can go on now with Favela where, like, that's not... It, it plays so different to how it used to. Like, yeah. you know, if you think about the map, if you take away all the buildings, it's essentially just kind of like a three-lane map. You've got two lanes on either side, and then, like, the middle, like, mixy area, but... Now you can like wall, like essentially wall run on the side of the map on like the AC units and you jump up on the roofs and like I don't know if they played Favela back in the day but like that's just you've gone from like a essentially a three lane map to like a five or six lane map and like we all know how they play Iron God that's, you know the more lanes is just it's, it's impossible. I right, so um, you can jump on top of the uh, building from the like you know you still have to jump off the map onto the ladder and climb up. Yeah. Like now on the other side of the building, you can jump on that little like sign right away and just jump up on top of the building immediately. And that was yeah. not a thing back in the day. You could not do that. I think sh shout out Chris on that. I think he showed me. It was like, yep, you just climb on the ledge, go up, and then you're already there instead yeah. of like running across the building and like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that used to be the that used to be the run of death right there. Like I'd have one man army, my noob tube, and I'll be trying to run across, dying yeah. four or five times. Like, just hoping you make it. Yeah, just hoping, <laughs> praying you make it. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Eric? You're a little bit of, a, of, of the like the movement guy. How, how do you? He likes it. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely. That's something I was like hearing that. Uh, obviously, it's like a faster pace playing old maps. So I don't know. It's gonna be like different, but. Uh, I, mean, I didn't really play competitive, you know, I was five years old, but <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the movement, though. I actually enjoyed it. I feel like it's kind of like Vanguard, MW19, and MW2. I don't know. It's like a combination, I, I, but I, I really, I really enjoyed it. And um, <clears throat> I mean, as Austin said, there's a skill to it, but uh, it could bail out too, you know, but I mean, I'm fine with that. You know, I, I really like the movement, so... <laughs> Yeah, you when know, it works just, in our favor, I'm loving it. Yeah. Whenever. When it's bailing out on <laughs> people, I'm like, damn. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, for the movement. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good. No, that's awesome. I guess, you know, similar topic to the movement, another big kind of pro debacle is centered around slide canceling. <laughs> what is the kind of current meta around the slide canceling during the beta? And will it be as prevalent and competitive as it was kind of last year and previous years? Uh, I think it'll be more than last year. Could be yeah. wrong, but yeah. that's, I mean, me, even me, I'm a coach, I'm 26. I was doing it every life, <laughs> like off spawn. Yeah, uh, I, I think I was, it's going to be definitely yeah. more like MW19 or Vanguard where people are like kind of spamming it at times. It is kind of nice though that you don't have to double click your uh, slide now. You can just uh, yeah. the, the jump button and just get yeah, out so of it right away. Jump. Yeah, no yeah. more wrist pain. Good I don't to have to uh, I am kind of curious to see because they had slide pads. I forget what they're called. There's some perk or something that made you like the slide farther. Pads. Tactical pads, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if those are going to be used. It might be in respawn. Uh, it kind of depends on what the dead sounds that is, um, and how bad like the sound sound whoring is. I guess I would say competitive. So, 
it's really hard to say. Like I said, until we get into private matches and like kind of play against each other. When you're playing against the pros, that's kind of when like the metal actually gets set. Like it's fun. Yeah, no, I think um, the, the 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 whole slide canceling, I think it's just all, all, always happens these days. But I know that there's a little difference with the was it the tactical pads and then there's the yeah the dead silence ones where it's just like them being in the same kind of category uh, and not being able to kind of you're either at your demise where it's like okay well now I could just get like I didn't even know if sound EQ is a thing like is that gonna be a thing next year like we <laughs> good question you know mm. <laughs> but yeah um, yeah damn if you do damn if you don't kind of on the on those two so we'll see I guess how it pans out in terms of if there's any GA on one of the, I think maybe the tactical pads get GA'd, or I should say uh, Activision will oversee the rules and go to uh, the Slash World League dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best um, rule set we had, though. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we've definitely got a good voice in the in the rep chat now to uh, <laughs> to get things done on our side. Um, moving on. Uh, I guess we talked about a little bit of the maps. Um, so majority of the maps on release will be the end up two maps, I assume. Um, which maps do you guys think uh, from the options back then will fit in today's competitive rule set? I know Austin, you already just covered kind of scrapyard. It's like the game just moves too fast. It's like a different kind of iteration. Mm -hmm. Is there any maps from back then, maybe like Invasion or uh, Karachi, like that we're going to see in or do you think would make sense in just from playing the beta in today's game? Uh, I think a lot of the old maps are going to make sense. Like, well, I think you're going to play like Karachi SD, Invasion SD, High Rise, Terminal. Um, maybe there's one other one out there that, I mean, people were saying sub base. I don't remember that. I know the map, but I don't remember it enough to be able to speak on it too much. Uh, when it comes to Hardpoint, though, I have no idea because Hardpoint wasn't a thing when those maps were released. I feel like mm -hmm. low might be kind of weird. Like, those maps, to me, are built for a CTF. It's like High Rise. You have two bases. Like, the teams are spawn in their base. Flag, you know, three lanes. It is what it is. Same thing with, like, Invasion, stuff like that. Um, but I would I would guess that it's going to be a lot of the same maps that they played back in 2009, 2010. Uh, and then, yeah, hopefully we get some new ones that are kind of more built for this. I, I guess of that, what, um, I know Snoop, you barely played MW2. Yeah, I don't Rival remember Rival. the maps that much, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, are they going to come out with new maps, like after, not on release, right? I think it's a like, few months in, like, yeah, like a few months. months. Yeah, they don't yeah. do the prestige, they do like the seasons now, don't they? So like, I think every yeah. season, I think their goal is to like, release like in season two they might release like m dub three maps like um mw3 yeah um i'm going blank on the m dub three maps like arcade in dome arcade in, uh yeah. bootleg lockdown yeah those maps lockdown yeah. might be interesting actually that's kind of a bigger map i like locked i mean i don't mind arcade and i thought that was kind of a cool map yeah um just spawn trapping people, storage or paint, whatever people call it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that, that'd be interesting. Um, well, Hardpoint and SD have been kind of staples in the competitive realm since day one. You just mentioned CDF, Austin. What do you see as the third game mode and what can we expect? Like, is there going to... I know we've been playing Control. Is there a possibility of CDF? Is that just uh, a, a false hope? What's uh? What are your guys' thoughts on the third game mode for the 2024 season? I think it's going to be control. I think CTF's a false hope. Um, I think that CTF might play better than control would, but I feel like it's been the game mode for the past few years. I think I don't see the league going back to CTF because um, last time we played it, we're getting bored of it. I would say, which I kind of agree. If sometimes CTF does get a little boring, but it really just depends on the map design and. Uh, like I said, these maps were built for CTF. They played CTF and Demolition. So, yeah, you could put the control points where the demo points or bombs were. See how that plays out, but I don't know. I feel like CTF on these maps makes more sense. 
personally. Do you think? Tell me if I'm wrong. I can't remember. Was it was it Black Ops Three? Where in a best of five, it was like, yeah, up point S and D, uplink uplink CTF S and D. Yeah, yeah. Which, do you think that, that? Do you think a style like that would ever come back? Nah. Uh, where they could maybe do control and CTF. I don't think so. I think if they were ever to do something like that, it would be like, it would switch. Like maybe in the finals, it would have that, but like in a best of five, I don't think they're ever gonna do three. You'd be like, I could see them at most. I still don't see it ever happening, but like maybe one best of five is CTF game three, and then one best of five is control game three. But like, I yeah. don't ever see it be a thing. They're gonna want two more. Probably. Maybe they, uh, maybe they bring back uplink from World War Two. You guys remember that? Gridiron, Iron. whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah, Gridiron. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Was that just like Blitz or what? Pretty much. But you no, it was just that. Yeah, you, you threw the ball. Yeah, beautiful. You just... The goal was on the Trying ground. Trying to play up. Yeah. You could run it down. Yeah, the goal was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah, we scrimmed oh. it for like a few days. Like, yeah, I don't know about this. Yeah, everyone was like, nah, nah. TTF. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was going to say like... Oh, I didn't know if like uh, what, what the alternative was, but that makes complete sense. Yeah, I didn't. I don't even think we practiced it. So I'm like, I, I just think we watched people stream and, we're, and you guys were like, all the North Americans were hating them. We're like, yeah, it's not going to be in white. We're not. Yeah. Um, it was also dumb because like a big thing about uplink was interceptions, and like if it's on the ground, you just stand in front of the thing. They can't throw. You don't even have to try to intercept. It. <laughs> stand in front of it. They can't. Like, what are they gonna do? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they bring back Blitz. Uh, I didn't mind Blitz. Run it. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it, it goes, it was like sneak, sneak your way through. But like, I'm not going to lie. That was, it was actually fun to watch. It was miserable to play at times. Oh, yeah. But it was fun to watch. <laughs> My like 15 year old self watching, uh, watching Optic run like a train on Blitz against EG. I can't remember what the map was called. With, uh, was it, what was it? Right, snowy one. I think so. With red, where you have like third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third, yeah, third, yeah, third, yeah and they just like ran a train. Oh, mate, I was hyped up. I was a big like <laughs> nature scum fan. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I used to love watching it. Uh, interesting to see how it would play in this game though, because the movement's so much quicker than Ghost, right? So, yeah, you because Ghost it was like, help. yeah. If that portal, if like, if like you've just watched the lane and you turn around, that portal just goes. Bloop. And you're like, where, yeah. where, where did this guy come from? <laughs> I know, I know. Back in the day, when you like, when you would sneak and you get past someone on the lane, you're just like, hey boys, I got a cap. Just like, hey, be through. Like, you get all giddy, you get a nice feeling. You're like, yeah, I've got one solidified. <laughs> I'm, go I'm good here. Eric has no idea what's going on. He's like, yeah, no, he's I don't like, even know the game mode. I don't know the game mode. It's like, it's like, it's it's like basically CTF, but you don't have to yeah. take it back to your point. Touch the flag and you score. Oh, oh all right, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I never watched it or played it. It was great. I feel like Uplink was uh, really good, though. I played IW. I really enjoyed uh, Uplink. Yeah, Uplink, 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 was, Uplink was fun to play. That's, that's one thing. It was yeah. really fun to play. Yeah, unless you're... Uh, unless you're... Wait. No, that was... That, that was you. Uh, was it you, Austin? You guys uh, made, like, the 13-3 like, the comeback against United? On the uplink, oh, uplink. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was like I don't know what it was. It was like a ten point comeback, though. Yeah, yeah. On, that uh, Infinite Warfare was the map. I forget the map's name. I know exactly what my face because Optic won champs on it. I can oh, look. I was against Austin as well. I don't know how that one happened. Like that. <laughs> uh, what was it? I can't remember the name. Precinct. Maybe? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I still think that was the greatest comeback of all time, bro. That shit was crazy. You know, that was. Uh, I don't know. Well, when you watch things happen, like like when you watch Perfect Call of Duty, and it, and you just see like it like flow, and you're like, wow, like, I don't know. It was beautiful. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. 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 It's literally. No, sure, I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure they had to listen in at the same time as well. They, did. As the, they put as it through the, the whole comeback. I don't know why. Yeah. Why would you ever go and listen on someone down Honestly, 10 that points? Honestly, that actually made the comeback better as well because you had, you had no, like every call. Yeah. Every, yeah, it was great. Um, I guess for um, 
a couple of these other items on the agenda. Is COD better with or without tuning? I think we all agree on the, the without tuning. Without. Like weapon tuning? I assume so. I assume yeah. it's the weapon tuning. I think it's better. I personally would just like red dot quick draw stock, but hey, that's just me. Yeah. Uh, honestly, all these like... Even me, my downfall was always like the dead zones and shit. Like, take that out my my game. Just yeah, bro. Just give me like one to ten in cents. Just four four, nothing else. Like, I'm good to go. But no dynamic, no none of this yeah. crap. Just like the good old days where I put my thing on medium and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the auto aim like in in this game? Is it like decent? Is it like stickier than previous gods? Is it the same? Probably a little bit less than the last CODs, but it's still pretty high. I mean, Parasite was still shooting pretty good on 2020. So, you know, if, if anyone could play on 2020, the aim assist is too high, bro. I'll stand by that. Okay, Zach, well, you, you've heard it here first. We're watching Austin on the first day of scrims. If he's yep. missing, we yep. just kind of auto aim. Like, four, 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 four. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm playing six, six. I wish I could play on four, four. Damn, I would die. I would never die. <laughs> Um, another one is did they murder favela did they what did they murder oh, no, favela <laughs> I oh, hated that map so much that map was never a good map in my opinion so I don't know <laughs> I don't think anything changed <laughs> always dead huh <laughs> everyone's uh, just sitting on the roof camping so yeah. hey Eric do you know who that is that's me and Dan's yeah. <laughs> Get out smarted, boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. it's really camping. No. It's not fun. <clears throat> I, I guess now, yeah, you guys have played the beta. We've all played a bit of the beta. Is, oh, what is your stance on COD is back? Yes, no, maybe, not sure. Too, too early to tell. Honestly, I don't think we ever left. As long as we stay on Twitch, we're good. <laughs> like, we are sweet. Like, we got Scump Co streaming. We're good to go. Mm. Oh, so I like, think it's. Mm. I think it's too soon to tell. Too soon Fine. to tell. I, I. I don't know. I'm. I don't think. Dude, COD to me, this is just like it's so different nowadays. It's like a, it's almost like I'm playing a different esport. Yeah, I look at my guns and there's 50 attachments. You know what I mean? Like the movement and all this stuff. It's not what I grew up playing, so it's not my Call of Duty, but. It's too soon to tell. We'll see. But I, I need to actually play 4v4 private match. I need to get my hands on that. And then I'll let you know. We'll come, we'll, yeah. we'll come back to Austin in a couple months. Eric, yeah. how about you? I <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's early to tell too, but I already like it more than MW2. You know? So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I feel like it's going to be a good con, but we'll see. I will say, too, my one ask of this season. We already got Red Dots back. That was my original ask. My one ask now <laughs> is to have every spawn in the game be readable. There should be a reason for something happening. Whether I correctly read it in the map or not, I should be able to go back and be like, ah, that was human error. I shouldn't go back and be like, I don't know, guys. He could just spawn there, I guess. Like, I I'm tired of that. So my one ask is everything be readable, like back in the day. So it's on me, make the right play, or if I don't know it, I made a mistake. Yeah, I mean, that's one, that one thing we were big on like last year with our team is like, when we watch stuff back, like, if we can find the reason, like, at least we can learn from it. Whether that means somebody spawned because the hill was white and like they got a funky spawn because of it, at least we can read it next time. Because if the hill was white, he might spawn there. Like, we, we don't know. Like, we'll, we'll know going forward. So, um, yeah, I always hated the random two different like two scenarios exactly the same but just two different spots that should just don't make no sense so yeah i'm hoping the same thing actually yeah we, we I, I always i always try to play devil's advocate with the players in terms of like reading spawns and whatnot and i'm like try to find as close of an example as possible like hey this is scenario one and this happened this is scenario two did something similar happen like what are the variables was this blocked yes was this open? Yes. And, you know, you go down through, like, your little tree chart kind of thing. Um, but, no, I think last last game it was, like, there were some things and you're just, like, 
And I'm trying, I'm trying to like be on the side of the developers. I'm trying to be like, okay, what is their logic here? Like, let's replicate this. Let's replicate this again and let's see what it is. And then you'd get different results and you're like, I guess you have to caution it, but like, I don't know, like, <laughs> good, good luck, have fun. Um, and at that point, I was just like, well, you guys are the players. Uh, peace out. Um, if you guys get shot in the back. Unlucky, I guess. Turn on the sound EQ. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you're you're like you, you're asking a genie, aren't you, Boston? You're yeah. Right at this that. point, yeah. But yeah. I mean, it used to be like that back in the day. There was always a reason for something happening, and I feel like that was part of the reason why I enjoyed competing so much because you were chasing perfection. Like, obviously, you're never gonna get there, but like, I could always come up with a reason to respond. Like, oh, we didn't block, or oh, we're looking, we're like, you know, there's always some sort of X, Y, or Z reason. Stuff happening and i feel like ever since mw19 and squad spawns came in there's either been squad spawn variables or i am actually convinced there was a random variable last year because even if you went to private match and you sat four of your players in a spot and got a kill you could do it 10 times and there'd be multiple different spawn scenarios even if you didn't an inch so i don't want any type of randomness i want to be able to chase perfection i want to be able to you know, if I don't read something, I can blame myself rather than being like, damn, I guess wrong. I'm sick of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm asking the genie, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, the sports system's got like a lot more intricate because um, like you used to just always spawn one spot and then it's like now it's like you can't spawn where your previous teammates spawn and you're like, you're like five meters to the left. But like, does that yeah. mean anything? We're not sure. Uh, um and then the line of sight is like sometimes you're looking through walls and you can block spawns and other times. So I'm in the same boat, Austin. But uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you've done robotics engineering. So if anyone can crack the code, uh, and, and, and Eric's a doctor. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure uh, we're, we're safe there. And hopefully that comes to uh, fruition. Um, you know, continuing on. I guess the beta isn't the be all end all. I know we've played it for a few weeks. Uh, we get even a little cheeky extended access. Hopefully, we get a little bit of uh, yeah. leniency there. Uh, what changes do you guys expect to see for the release of the game? I think they are going to tweak spawn. I th even on yeah. the casual side of things, I saw a lot of people complaining about it. So I think they're going to look into that. Um, there was an issue too with the perks not working correctly. Like, I know Flak Jacket didn't stop a frag. Just got one aided anyways. Um, dead Silence was 100% Dead Silent. I think Tack Mask was broken, too. So there's definitely some bugs and glitches, I think, that they know or they're aware of. Uh, and I heard... I didn't play the PS4 version or PS5, but apparently they changed things really quickly. Um, going yeah, to PC, so... Yeah. So I'm hoping that they, they keep with that feedback and keep changing. Yeah, they fixed the battle rage pretty quick. Yeah. Battle Rage, it was like really, really bad. <laughs> Do it, and I, I assume Striker, Striker gets out. Yeah, I've been <laughs> snipers too. <laughs> like, I know, I know, like the competitive fans love snipers, but mm -hmm. snipers will be GA if they're in the current state because yeah, right. that's just not competitive at all. So, yeah, what, yeah. What's, what's the smoke situation like? Is uh, is that like? Can you? I heard you can one way them, but. I tried it. No, I tried. I tried it, and uh, it's kind of hard, but you can. I think you can. Oh, also, I think there's stair glitching again, too, bro. Stair I glitching? I'm pretty sure it's stair <laughs> oh, glitching no. again. Yeah, uh, there's some things I'm really hoping that they pull through. Um, but yeah, when we were playing like the beta tournaments, we were limiting it. I mean, it was six v six. We were only allowing like one smoke per team. Cause I think there's a way to one way them. People were saying. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I mean, I personally like when there's a smoke in S and D, only S and D, not respawn. But uh, it just has to be usable and not the point where you can cover a bunch of like or you should want to throw a smoke to cover a lane, lock off a line of sight, not throw a smoke to your feet. So hmm. yeah, we'll see what they do there. Yeah, I know. I know. Back in the day, on uh. Was it World War Two? Like, didn't we limit the smokes to like one smoke a team or like? Yeah, we did it on uh one smoke and respawn on Forest and Gibraltar. No smokes on Muddy Docks. Or same right here, like the smaller maps, and then in S and D, I think it was two. Yeah, something like that. 
And that, I mean, I felt like that worked pretty well, but like I know these days with what's kind of on the line, someone will just like, it's hard to police and uh, yeah, some external situations and circumstances, people like, fuck it then and just... <laughs> yeah, we, we can say it how it is, bro. These youngins don't have that same level of competitive integrity we did. You know? oh, yeah. oh, I'll say it how it is. <laughs> These youngins don't know about that. We were about them making the game better. They're about just chasing any bit of cash they can. They're about the W. I, which I kind of do respect in like its own sense as well. Like I'm like... Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't like that like whatever it takes mentality because then you're borderline cheating. Yeah, but it's right. all legal. See, this is a this is a definitely a, a a fun topic to discuss because it's like, like I you know, awesome. We used to back in the day. It was yeah, like hey, it's the integrity of the game. And if someone did something that was messed up, like rather it was was a World War Two, some Akimbo's came out or Clay did something to Era one time. And it was just like yeah. like you were frowned upon, like or like there was an actual act of pursuit to like blacklist teams and now it's like you can't even blacklist teams because that could be like a really good team like really good teams could do it like i know Shotzi, he had the was at the mp40 on vanguard like he had the f9 stabilizer on it and it was just like yeah whatever i guess like we're not gonna we, we still want to scream optic kind of thing um and if all teams aren't about it then it's just loses its weight and like yeah being able to do something about it. Um, There's no pressure. You can get away with anything. There's no consequence. So, yeah. So, so I probably it's just like, okay, like I respect bowls or like the, the, the people that do it as well. But the other part of me is just like, yeah. Where, where's the, it's a gentleman's agreement. Like be a gentleman, do the right thing. Um, and just be the better team. Yeah, I just always like to go back to my one example of this is why I don't respect it. If these kids played, let's say we these kids played Advanced Warfare, right? Like this set of pros. You know what we would have been playing? Every single life, someone would have had either Cloak or Stim. That was something we had to get out of the game, bro. Imagine every life of Call of Duty you could turn invisible. <laughs> That's when gentlemen's agreements really started. Like that bad. Like, it was insane. Like, Advanced Warfare, I played a loser's finals at the first event. The team did not agree. So we were turning invisible or had double health every life. Why that's is why a big grin? He's like, yeah, that sounds fun. Bro, like, I know. Fun, but no, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play Nobody wants to watch that, though, bro. Nobody yeah, wants to watch nah. that. You know what I mean? Like, the game, Call of Duty would have been ruined, in my opinion, if we kept those, yeah. that rule set in. Like, it would have been ridiculous. Or, like, in BO3, they had the claymores on the walls, remember? Like, bro, there's some stuff that was, uh, yeah, they had thermite grenades oh, yeah. or something. You threw them on the wall. Oh, man, I just mines? remember. Huh. What'd you say, Denz? Was it like trip mines? Yeah, it was trip mines yeah, on the wall. Yeah, you yeah. could throw it on a wall run. And that, that was allowed. That was allowed. So, like, we, bro, like, I if used we it. didn't have these GAs and stuff, like, it would have been unwatchable content, in my opinion. And these kids nowadays might have played those. So. Go on, Zach. Oh, yeah, we, oh, yeah, we would have lost, yeah. Like, you thought Sally Q was bad with like, everything. Like, yeah, I would have been turning invisible every life. Yeah, every life turned invisible. Like, yeah, it would have been great. With Sally Q as well. would have been unreal. You'd have been sound horning the invisible people. I was going to say, you could, I swear you could do that, like, on Black Ops. So you could, like, you hear the, like, the little... Yeah, like, it's like, it's yeah it was like a... Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Like heat waves. Yeah, yeah. But good luck. If you, you heard me, you ain't seeing me. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, no. I think um, I, I think as well for the rule set, I think for the players to enjoy it and essentially be like ambassadors and advocates of the game, like you do need to get rid of those kind of those things. Because um, I always think, like, hey, if the players enjoy the game they're playing, then they're like, hey, like this was a sick match. This was cool. I like playing it. More people tune in. and like, holy shit, like everyone's all about it. Yeah. Um, so... But still, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few instances this year that are going to have some questionable moments for sure. There always is. Never <laughs> see it raise me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think we'll wrap up pretty quick. Um, 
I think we covered a lot about the beta. Was there any like other things that you guys want to to highlight about the beta? You want to talk about? Um, you can feel free to to chip in. I feel like we covered covered pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, more than more than I thought we'd cover. So, shout out to you for that. Did anyone get a nuke? I d I died like four off. I, I didn't even try off. to go for that. I don't. Yeah, bro. Once I, I started playing. Off. Get in the skill based matchmaking lobbies, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm not trying, I'm not trying that hard, bro. No thing, I, was playing with, I was playing with Colin, so Colin was bringing the skill base down, right? Yeah, <laughs> so I, I, we we're playing, we we're playing Rust. I died on a 26, and the same game, I also dropped like 87 kills. So not only did I trip the 100 bomb, I also tripped the nuke. So uh, I just gave up. I, yeah, I'm, I'm reti I've re I've retired again. Yeah, no, I died too off because my PC like crashed. I was playing no. on PS5, but I was streaming. So like my PC crashed and then my monitor went black. That's and then <laughs> you died like four for us as well. Yeah, yeah, like five yeah. or something. You started, over, you started overthinking and shit. <laughs> I did because yeah. Josh was like, no, nah. Josh. Made <laughs> but no, nah, I didn't. Damn. I didn't get it. Uh, well, but yeah, I, I think uh, I don't have anything else to talk about the beta. I feel like we covered everything. I'm just excited to get back into it or actually playing like competitive yeah. something. I haven't really been like anything competitive in like four or five months. So. Two, no. two weeks till we're back in Boston or what? Two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Oh, wow. The game's going to drop and everyone's going to be playing non-stop tournaments for yeah. the first couple of weeks. And it'll be interesting to see how like, yeah. I, 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 I personally love like when you guys are streaming and whatnot, I've got like every like tab open and I'm just mm -hmm. watching like what's going Honestly. on. Like, I, love, I love COD personally. I love watching it. I love the competitive itch behind it. I'm well. not even kidding. Like, and I'm 26, but midnight release, like when you guys are all together, you, like everyone's playing the game. We're playing the game in the back room, like I'm playing pubs. Like that is the funnest time for me. I think you're frozen. You, you guys are <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There we go. Back in the oh, yeah. oh, oh, We heard you, but we heard you. You heard me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just froze. <laughs> it's, uh, I, blame Tyler, I blame Tyler Production, like, sending me packet lots and shit. Um, yeah, that's the funnest time for me. Like, you guys staying up till 7 a.m., like, oh. just grinding, drinking monsters. <laughs> Shout out, Monster. Amazing. Shout out, Monster. Amazing. Great energy, product. Sure. Great product. Yeah, keeps me going. Uh, we do have one uh, question. Uh, that was from the from the last episode, and it says, "Do you guys have a preference for this? Is at the water wagons? Do you have a preference for the meta, and do you think the squad is equipped to deal with the possible scenarios?" I personally think P Dog has shown he can run every role, so you guys are in a really strong position. I know we covered this a little bit before, um, where we'll talk about the flex role and if there's going to be a true flex and whether or not they switch guns or whatever it may be. Uh, what what are your guys' opinions? And Eric, you can you can lead the way on this question. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think the team is pretty equipped. Like, you know, we got what it takes. I feel like, uh, I mean, yeah, as, as he said, P-Dog can run any gun. I mean, we got Austin, you know. He's like, <clears throat> so I feel like we have everything to make this a good year and you know it's just to it's just you know time to grind <laughs> but uh people, people forget though i've seen i've seen austin run a sub austin's a bit of a demon on a sub too huh yeah yeah when? Never, never uh, Ghost. I was the best player at the end of the game, bro. Go watch. Uh, look at him. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> nah, but uh, to go back to the question, I think it's what I said uh, earlier. Um, a true flex player. So half the maps be two ARs, two subs. Half the maps be one AR, three subs. I think that's the best Call of Duty meta. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, to add on to that point, the movement of the game. I mean, we have Eric and we have Cap, and I know they fly. Uh, and, and sometimes you might need to reel them in, give them, uh, obviously give them a little bit of leeway, but not go too crazy. I think just from playing the beta, I think it suits our team very well. We kind of got, you know, a, a little bit of everything. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm really excited to see kind of how it all pans out. Um, and yeah, I mean the game the game's getting released in three weeks, and we're in Boston too. And there's going to be all the juicy details about the season coming out soon. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really exciting. Um, but once again, if you guys are yeah, we'll wrap up there. And if you guys are kind of liking the content um, and the series, make sure to, to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what we can improve on. As always, uh, I think this is Austin's uh, first time on The Locker Room. Broke his uh, virginity today on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, well, he had the live person one, but with me and Zach, I know he gets a little scary with our two faces on the... Yeah. Yeah. It was a big step for me, man. Thank you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we appreciate everyone's support. Um, And yeah, if you guys want to see anything, uh, I'm sure we'll have the rosters are nearly finalized. So once again, want to kind of dive in and get everyone's little opinion on how things are paying out. And I'm sure by the time the game's dropped, what do we got? Two or three remaining teams left to, to announce? Something like that. Three teams. Yeah, yeah a couple, three. couple, couple, couple rumors flying about, but three teams officially. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'd love to 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 pick the brains of the guys and see, you, you know, what their stance is on those teams, and yeah, give us a real honest, honest uh, opinion. I know Austin's gagging for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything from you, Zach? Anything from the no, just. Uh, be sure to check out Day War Collection. You know, the marketing team, everyone behind the scenes, they, they go hard as fuck. So, um, trying to bring some good merch. Every merch drop, they're setting the, they're raising the bar. So, the merch is just going to keep, keep getting better and better. Um, I really like this collection. Material is really nice. So, yeah, check it out. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Shout out Austin, shout out Eric. Um, yeah, ne- next episode is talking about the, the format for next year, which is going to be fun. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.